Hello, welcome again to Engineering Semester Channel. Today let's start the another interesting topics of the WebRTC tutorial series. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. Today let us see some advanced concept of signaling process and why it is required in WebRTC. Let us get started. In the last video we already discussed what is signaling server and why it is required in WebRTC. To recap what we discussed, signaling is the process of setting up, controlling, and terminating a communication session between the clients. Signaling is necessary to communicate between endpoint users in P2P communication. Session Description Protocol SDP. SDP will be used for the exchange of metadata. ICE technique helps to communicate two nodes directly in the Internet. Basically ICE is the technique which uses stun and turn protocols to establish a connection. Stun and turn server can be used to get public IP address to establish a connection to the end user. Next let us look, does a signaling server is mandatory for WebRTC? The answer for this, either you can use signaling server or you don't required. WebRTC knows how to talk directly to another peer without a signaling server, but it doesn't know how to discover another peer. We already know that, in order to contact another peer on the web, you need to first know its IP address. Now think about it, how are you going to call another user? How will user know when you call? And when to call? So for that you required a signaling server. Signaling server will gives those information about the user and session. The answer of the above question of signaling is, you don't strictly require a signaling server with WebRTC as long as you have SDP offer and SDP answer. For example, I have two peers that want to connect to each other. Typically the first peer would create an offer and send it to the second user through a signaling server. The second peer would respond with an answer. So, basically, if you can directly send those SDP offer and answer, then you don't require signaling server. Now let us look what is SDP offer and answer request. If two user want connect each other, first user send offer request and another user answer for that offer. Both peers have a connection to the signaling server before they have a connection to each other. Now through signaling server we can exchange the answer and offer. Next let us look. What does contains inside ASDP offer and answer? The offer and answer model specifies rule for the bilateral exchange of session description protocol SDP, messages for creation of multimedia streams. These offer and answer contains information about audio, video, codec parameters etc. of the user. User send an initial SDP offer to start a multimedia communication session. The participant receiving the offer may generate an SDP answer by accepting the offer or it may reject the offer. I hope you understand what is SDP offer and request in signaling. I think it is enough for today. Let us conclude. We have understood that. You don't strictly require a signaling server with WebRTC as long as you have SDP offer and SDP answer. We can better to use a signaling server to find the information about the peer or user. Participant receiving the SDP offer may generate an SDP answer. Or he or she can reject the offer also. That's it for now. I hope you got a better idea about WebRTC signaling process, SDP offer and answer. Let us see more in the upcoming videos. If you are thinking this is informative, then like and share subscribe. Also support us. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.